What's going on, Creator Fam? I am the host that loves you the most, Ozeal. I want to welcome you to the Creator Factor. This is the podcast, my friend, where we help content creators build their business and brand online. And today we have a special guest who went from the, the corporate nine to five maze to now becoming a full time Instagram rock star content creator. He's the founder of IG Creator. Academy, igcreatoracademy.com, a platform dedicated to helping content creators like ourselves and entrepreneurs leverage Instagram for business growth. Uh, he's built an IG community with over 120K creators just like you who are building and monetizing their message online. And we're about to learn a thing or two about Instagram and how to monetize and leverage Instagram in 2024 and beyond. Creator Factor Fam. Let's welcome to the show none other than Juan Galan in the building. Juan, how are you doing today? Thanks, Ocil, for that amazing uh, introduction. I'm doing great. I am currently uh, visiting my family in Peru, so I'm enjoying time with them, but also working really hard because uh, as online entrepreneurs, it seems like you never stop the grind, right? <laughs> Can't stop, won't stop. That is correct, Juan. 2024 is here, brother. Talk to me. How are how's how are you feeling feeling about 2024? Like if you had to pick one word to describe the feeling that you want to feel in 2024, what word that be? Well, I actually thought a lot about my 2024 word, and this year it's dominate. Ooh. So I'm ready to dominate and help my students and clients dominate their industries. And uh well, for me, it goes deeper, it goes way beyond just dominating an industry, but actually I dominating my thoughts, my emotions, because I'm also mm -hmm. a lot into personal and self development. As a lot of creators, we talk about that a lot on the show, the importance, the alignment and how parallel content creation, content creators are aligned with personal growth, because as you know, it is hard to run a creator business. Uh, and there's a lot of moving parts wearing a lot of hats. And mm -hmm. the mental health and taking care of yourself is very, very important. So I'm glad I'm, I'm with you on that, brother. I love that domination, domination for 2024. Domination. I'm going to adopt that word. I like that. <laughs> um, you know, let's talk a little bit about the journey. Juan, as I mentioned in the intro, you know, you went, you transitioned out of corporate, right, to focus on, you know, building a brand as a lifestyle influencer. You, know, you had a few failed accounts. Uh, some hard knocks in, in creating Instagram accounts. And, you know, during that time, you were involved also as a social media manager, marketer, working with clients, and you were sharing tips online. And, and then, of course, that led you to launching IG Creator Academy. And that was your that was your hit, man. I mean, you hit it out the park. You know, talk to us a little bit about IG, man. I mean, what what was it about IG out of all the social media platforms out there? What was it about Instagram that attracted you the most? I think Instagram was the first platform that I really got into when it came out in 2012. I remember um, I always loved sharing photos uh, and I used to share them in Facebook with my friends and family. Uh, but then when I found that you had this app that you could share photos, uh, specifically photos, I loved it. And uh, I started seeing other people growing their followings. And uh, I've been a very competitive person. Uh, and I was like, well, if they're doing it, I want to do it. It started more or less like that. Um, but at some point, I started seeing that people were making a living of Instagram. Uh, and they were traveling. And what, and what year was this one, more or less? This was maybe, so it started in 2012, maybe around 2014, okay, 2015. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really early on, on in the Instagram game. Um, and I started seeing that people were making a living of it. And mo and most uh, and something that really caught my attention was that they were traveling the world thanks to it. And I'm, uh, I love traveling. It's one of my biggest passions, as you know, as I told you before. I'm here. With, I'm in Peru right now. I'm going to Asia afterwards. So I'm my, my goal, my dream was to be able to... Uh, make a living of instagram so that i could travel uh, but i had no idea how to do it right like back then you had no coaches no courses nothing on instagram growth or monetization so it was just like trial and error googling things doing a lot of wrong things that uh 
I don't regret them because I feel everything is part of the journey of your journey and everything becomes a lesson. And now I can share those lessons with my audience. Uh, but yeah, it was like a, a long uh, process for me uh, to find until I found out what I really wanted to do and how I wanted to do it. Talk to us about the lessons. You mentioned that there was a few, you know, felt accounts and some lessons that you learned. Uh, let's dig into that. What were some of the key lessons you learned? From so that one of the one of the first lessons uh, was that there is no fast track to success. Uh, and I remember I bought followers with my first account because I just wanted those big numbers. So I bought followers. I joined uh like these engagement pots i even bought i was paying for a bot that i was automating like engagement and i was growing my following like that but obviously it wasn't genuine so i wasn't building community uh i wasn't getting i wasn't getting any roi out of that so yes i was growing but i was not i wasn't making any money so i try to fast track my way to success with all of these like shady methods uh but at the end it, they didn't work out so i had to basically close down that, that account and start from scratch and uh that's when i started like looking at other successful creators what they were doing well it was mostly in the travel space because i started in the lifestyle and travel space so i was looking at what other creators were doing and i saw that they were all really engaged with each other. So I was like, okay, engagement, community building is, is crucial for this. So I started building those connections genuinely this, this time, uh, commenting on people's posts, uh, chatting with them in the DMs and building those relationships. And that kind of like pushed my my that my second account uh, to be discovered by, by more people. But, and it grew up to, so my first account, I grew it up to, 33,000 followers, but I, again, using all these shaded methods, mm -hmm. then my second account, it was organic, took me like two years to grow to 12,000 followers, but I was dedicating hours and hours and hours every day. And I was still seeing no return. Um, so that's when I decided, and that's when COVID happened, actually, that's, I was around 2020 and I was just, I was getting great engagement, but I wasn't monetizing and I was just feeling that it was not fulfilling me anymore. And I have, I had a background in marketing and social media. So I've been working in marketing and social media since, uh, 2012. And so I was like, I'm just gonna, and I saw that there was this trend gro growing in online education, uh, because in 2020, everyone just, they had no choice, right? Everyone started teaching, everyone started look, or, or looking for uh, resources to learn new things. So I saw there was this trend growing on teaching Instagram marketing, content creation. And I felt like I had this long experience on not only Instagram, uh, on community building, but also in marketing. So I decided to give it a shot and start teaching people, well, the audience that I had built on that travel account to uh grow on instagram and uh create content so i got my first few clients uh coaching clients through that account but since it had been a travel account um changing that niche toward to uh instagram marketing content creation it was affecting a little bit my um reach and the, and the algorithm wasn't really recognizing that new shift in my content so i decided to give it one more shot and i started ig creator academy in september 2021 you know listening to like your journey up to this point juan you know what's really interesting is that creators struggle and it's a topic you know of, of the niche right should i niche down and in this day and age where we're pulled to be on so many platforms in order for us to to maximize our, our brand influence, uh, the pressure's there, right? Yeah. And, you know, and it's it's really tough, but you decided early on, and I'm impressed because not that many creators that I know to say, hey, this is my lane, I'm gonna stick with it, I'm gonna dominate it, and I'm gonna focus on this on providing the best value for my, for my audience. Like, was that a decision? I mean, were there moments where you were distracted to be like, well, maybe let me pivot and go in a different direction from IG, let me jump on TikTok, cause that's hot. Like, how did you stay focused and I'm curious to know also your thoughts on just kind of niching down as a content creator who is trying to build a brand off education. Like, what are your thoughts on that? that that's a great question uh, because 
when we talk about niching down, I really think about the audience that you're serving and the problem that you're solving. Uh, but I've actually, if there's a word for this, like niched up in the way that you were saying, because yes, I started on Instagram, uh, but actually last year I started to see a decline in reach and growth as well. Uh, because yes, there are so many people doing exactly what I'm doing. So it's more competitive. There's um, one of my, my biggest uh, growth spurs was when Reels came out. And now everyone is doing Reels. So obviously there's more competition. So, um, and it was affecting me. I, I have to admit that uh, after growing so much, seeing this stagnation in growth and reach and engagement uh, was affecting me. So I decided to uh, expand my my presence. And I was like, well, if, if Instagram is not, I'm not saying it didn't work for me because it's still, it's like my main uh, income generator. But um, I was like, you know what? If Instagram is not giving me what it was giving me before, I'm just gonna expand to new platforms. So I started a YouTube channel. I started a blog. I uh, started to be active on TikTok. So I just started to expand my reach, but because I had already dominated Instagram yeah. and doing this was great, not only to uh, get new, reach new people and get new clients, but also to position myself as an authority because mm -hmm. who are you going to trust more as an expert, someone who's just on Instagram or someone who has a proven record of, you know, uh, being able to create long form content where you can speak on a YouTube video for 10 minutes uh, versus a 15 second reel or where you can write a, uh, a thoughtful, uh, deep blog on a specific topic. So I started doing that and that really helped me position my brand even better um, and get more clients and even more brand partnerships because I could now pitch to brands. I'm not only giving you a reel, I can give you a, a, a an inclusion into my email newsletter, mm -hmm. into my blog, uh, a YouTube video. So it really helped my business scaling my brand, even though um, my niche remained the same. So you the started people, the audience that got, I'm targeting. Got it. So you, you, you identified your target audience. You said it was going to be IG. You dominated. So I'm going to educate my audience. You started small and then you expanded into different brackets and yeah. got into YouTube, which is a more of a discovery um, yes. education. I got it. I love it. I love that. I, lo I love that strategy. And speaking of strategy, Instagram has evolved and is changing. And, you know, it was Reels and Reels was hot and then stories. And then it's constantly like I feel like the rules are always <laughs> about an instant just changing it up. Right. And I'm curious to know, like for content creators now who are trying to grow an Instagram following and are feeling a bit stagnant, like I'm not growing because there's been I've been talking to a lot of smaller creators and they're like, look, it's just I'm not getting the engagement that I used to. You know, yeah. what are some of the things that are working now um, to to grow uh, an Instagram following? Actually. One of the things that I've seen that are working the best right now are reels still work. Like, okay. if you, especially for if you think about it as a funnel, short reels are the top of the funnel and are going to help you reach newer audiences. But what I've noticed uh, and something that I've incorporated into my content strategy again <sighs> is uh, single posts most specifically uh infographic content content that can be easily saved and that provides people quick wins um the carousels one just to be specific is that is that one not of them carousels you, carousels single, single post just like gotcha. one photo uh with uh, value in the post so mm. obviously if you are in the lifestyle uh niche you cannot you probably cannot do it or you could but it's not that common to do infographics uh but if you are in the any online education industry whether you're a coach a consultant or mm -hmm. freelancer you can create easy to consume and digest infographics that are easily saved that provide quick wins for people and those mm -hmm. have been blowing up for me the same way than uh than reels were blowing up like a year or two years ago these infographics are working really well. And then you've got carousels, uh, which for some people, they've been working extremely well as well. In my case, not so much, but I love doing carousels because they're the, the way in which you nurture your current audience. So mm -hmm. they might not reach 
thousands or millions of new people, but they reach your current audience and you can use those to nurture them and uh, to convert them into customers. So I would suggest that if you're getting started, you should utilize all Instagram formats, absolutely all formats, not just reels. I know there's been a trend where people just want to do reels, 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 because they help you grow, but things have changed and you have to utilize all different formats and test, right? You'll see that one type of content will work best for your account and for your audience and then double down on that. Still keeping up with the other formats. All formats serve a different purpose in your strategy. What about hashtags? There's always, uh, I know that's always changing. It was five and then 30 and then a five. And then like, how does that work? What do you think about that? Honestly, I don't take, I don't pay attention to hashtags. Okay. I, I throw in some hashtags, but I actually don't even research them anymore. Just okay. making sure that the hashtag describes what the post is about. Uh, mm -hmm. So kind of like thinking in, in keywords terms, but I'm not like researching hashtags, spending like, oh, should I use 30, 20, no, like it's a waste of time. Cause really the, the focus of Instagram is content. And if your content mm -hmm. is good, it's going to be found by people. It's going to be shared. It's going to be saved. It's going to be discovered. But if your content sucks, you cannot fix it with hashtags anyway. So hashtags should be the least of people's worries. When you're posting content on reels, I know this was something that someone asked me and I didn't quite know the answer because I'm not, I'm trying to dominate. I'm trying to be like you on, on IG, man. So I'm not the expert. That's the reason we have you. But in regards to the reels, like a lot of people are just repurposing the content and putting it on reels with the captions on. Like, are there like best practices in having really good executed reels um, in 2024? So one thing's true. The more organic the reel is to, uh, the, the more native the reel mm -hmm. is to Instagram, the better it will perform, right? Okay. Uh, but I've seen people that, you know, repurpose uh, their, and I do this, I, I don't post it on Instagram, but I take my YouTube videos, I uh, chop them into short form videos, and I post these on TikTok, I post these on shorts, mm -hmm. and I've seen people doing this on Instagram. And for some people, it works. I don't do it because I like to keep my reels as native as possible to the app and the reels uh that are working really well lately are the short pov reels where you tap into your audience's pain points and desires they tend to work really well because people feel seen and heard so they get shares they get comments but also um authority building reels like direct to camera reels they work really well so you can either repurpose them if you have a youtube video and you're you're chopping it down you can repurpose that into reels but the ones that i've seen that perform the best is literally like if you are talking to a friend on uh mm -hmm. facetime so like super raw organic just use instagram's fonts no 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 like hard editing just keep it in super real those are working really well as well interesting you say that because i feel like that's where i feel like the creator content marketing is going where people want real I've, i'm seeing that on on youtube before on youtube there was as you know there was you know an intro bumper and there was all more jump cuts and you made it fancy and i'm i'm seeing more creators now get away from that because yeah. people are gravitating towards more authentic kind of like you know in shot in the camera type of content versus yeah. all the uh the fancy jump cuts that we're used to seeing so exactly so okay we talked about you know reels and the different kind of content hashtags if, are there like any like common like mistakes for like our creators who are educators you know like you who are educating who are building authority are there some like common mistakes that you're seeing that when you see someone be like oh they they should not be doing that. They should be taking a different approach. Like, what are some of the things that we're seeing that you're seeing that we can improve on in regards to creating brand authority on Instagram? They are, and I've seen this so much, and I, <laughs> I've talked about this a lot with my audience. They become Googles. And by mm. Googles, I mean like three tips for this or five steps for that. Uh, and this content can be found on Google. Like, and people don't go on Instagram for for these type of content people you uh, what educators need to be focusing on it is storytelling uh mm -hmm. like how i this or how my client did that or uh you know focus more on authentic stories storytelling is key for uh educating because no one wants to be see the same three tips to grow on instagram 
or you could be more like, <laughs> this is the number one reason the, why all my clients were struggling to grow on Instagram, you know, make it more authentic related to your personal story or your clients or students stories or someone that, you know, focus on telling stories and, uh, on, and things that are relatable as well. So we talk a lot about, you know, the importance of content batching, content planning, uh, especially for, you know, creators that are running businesses, as you know, Juan, we're, we're running operations, we're running business, and we're trying to find the bandwidth to create content and be creative. What do you do to just immerse yourself in the content creation space, mental space to create? I mean, do you front load content? How many posts are you doing a week? Like, I'm curious to know how you schedule things out to stay consistent and effective on, on IG. I love that you're asking me this. Uh, so since last year i made the change to focus more on long form content what i'm doing now is i'm focusing on creating one long form con piece of content per week so my main one would be my blog but i also take that blog and i use it as a youtube script so i'm repurposing it into youtube and then i take that youtube video i chop it into short form pieces of content and i post it on tiktok linkedin shorts uh and then i use that same blog post to get the content for uh instagram um so i'm literally just doing one piece of content per week um which would be like my core content. And then for Instagram, I'm throwing in some other piece of content. So like short reels, POVs R lately have uh, uh, increased the number of posts I do on Instagram. I'm posting twice per day. It's mm -hmm. an experiment. I've always been against posting more than once uh, per day. And I, I was always against posting every day, but I'm experimenting and this is something that's really important for everyone to know is that uh what worked for you yesterday is not going to work for tomorrow so if you see that you hit a plateau or something you need to experiment whether that is more posting or less posting or different types of content but you need to experiment so i'm in that experimentation phase right now uh but i have my core content which is the content that grows my business uh, which is which um, which comes from my blog and then on instagram i'm throwing in more reels short reels some infographics and all of these help uh, work as uh lead generators because all it. my content on instagram usually has a call to action i'm using dm automation so they all lead to people commenting a word and signing up for my freebie and getting into my email list yeah, let's talk about that juan uh those, those tools because i think for for our creators are really trying to get into you know, the automation and really, you know, get, get that dialed in, uh, cause it does make things more efficient. What are some of the tools that you find are making business more efficient for you in regards to leads and just being more automated? Well, I've automated my entire content creation process using mm. AI. So I, use... oh, let's talk about that, man. Come on. The big A word, <laughs> man. Let's go. Let's go. Yes, yes. I don't know what it would be of my life without AI. So I, as I told you before, I repurpose all my content from one piece of content, from my, my core piece of content. I call it my prime content. And mm -hmm. I use AI for this. So I use tools like, well, ChatGPT, I'm paying for the plus ver uh, version. Mm -hmm. So I, I have already some established prompts and processes. So I just have to type in a few things without having to write everything again. And it repurposes my content for Instagram for and for my other... Um, channels mm -hmm. and uh, so chat gpt is a is a must uh i've started experimenting with a new one called vocable.ai which is great for content creators which one is that one one say it again vocable.ai okay and it's free and it uses uh gpt as well uh gpt4 and it organizes your your campaigns uh it creates briefs uh it creates drafts from these briefs like assigns you can collaborate with your team so i'm testing this one interesting loving it so far uh i used opus clip for uh taking my long form videos and creating the, uh short form videos so it uses ai to uh create short form videos um i use Metricool for uh, scheduling my content, but something that I love about Metricool is that it has an AI text generator. So for these short videos that come out from my long video, I don't have to think about captions all the time. I just tell Metricool what the video is about and it creates a caption with hashtags uh, oh. using AI. And then I use uh, one of my favorites is DM automation. It's called Loom Suite, but uh, 
I know most people know ManyChat, yeah, many but it's chat. basically, I use a competitor called Loom Suite. It's more affordable, by the way, and it okay. does the same. <laughs> okay. And, and um, okay. I just love being able to automate all of these processes because right now I do have an assistant. I have a VA. She helps me around 10 hours per week, which is okay, but it's still a lot of things to do on my own. So I try to automate everything. And I have also a project management tool called ClickUp, where I uh, have all my content for my long form channels, short form channels, uh, project management, uh, where I have uh, my calendars, marketing calendars, launch calendars, everything. I have it there. You just gave us a full like resource guide right there, Juan. I feel like, hey, for our listeners and, and people who are watching on YouTube, I mean, that that's, you know, that's game right there. Game over. That's domination. That's a domination game, y'all. That's a domination. It is dominating and being more efficient. And, you know, I'm excited. I think I've been having a lot of conversations with a lot of creators regarding AI. And for the most part, I think a lot of creators are favorable uh, in, in AI because it's going to make our content creation and marketing a lot more efficient, a lot more effective especially Absolutely. for creative solopreneurs like ourselves. I think it's a game changer. And I always tell people it's, it's okay. It's not gonna, is there, it's, it's a tool not going to replace you. It's a tool that we can use to make our life easier yeah. and we can maximize our content. So I'm excited about that. And some of those tools I've yeah. never heard of. So I'm, I'm writing them down <laughs> uh, and we'll make sure that we, we note that any, like any thoughts, like, what do you think? What do you think it's where we're going with the content creator economy and as it relates to, to AI, like where do you see us going in the future? Uh, I love the fact that AI can help us automate process, speed processes, and just have a twenty four seven marketing assistant. Yeah. Uh, I've been really um, diving into AI for my business, and I've been sharing the whole process with my audience. So, if actually, if you take a look at my last few posts. Well, actually, over the past maybe three months, most of my content has been shifting for, uh, to AI-driven marketing for Instagram. So I'm teaching okay. you how to do all the Instagram things with AI. Oh, I, love uh, it. I have an AI guide. I have an AI membership. I have an AI course. So, uh, yeah. You're just, all in. You know, You're all in I'm on all, AI, man. <laughs> I'm all in. And I feel that some people that don't leverage AI this year are going to stay behind because everyone is doing it. So uh, we're going to see definitely going to see a rise in in authenticity is that yeah. the word and yeah. authenticity mm -hmm. uh and we and we've seen this already on instagram people generating comments with ai posts that are you can tell when a post has been generated with especially with ChatGPT, right um so we're, there's going to be a huge wave of authenticity so it's going to be uh up to us as content creators to more than ever tell our story show up uh do more video direct to camera video because that's how we're gonna differentiate ourselves with people that are just using ai for everything so i am a fan of ai i use ai for everything business related and personal related i use it for like planning everything in my life uh but i do re recognize that uh it's gonna cause some problems in the industry because people are not using it properly Properly expand on that. No, well, I was just saying, uh, people have seen like, eth people. like ethical, like ethics, or yeah. are you thinking? Well, that as well, but uh, like, let's say you can take someone, someone's product, and pass it through ChatGPT and repurpose it and sell it as your own. Oh, uh, yeah, and that is unethical. But mm -hmm. also, just creating content that is not you and that yeah. doesn't sound like you and as i said i've already started to see a lot of people creating chat gpt content chat gpt captions it's obvious yeah. um copy and paste because i'm like oh copy and paste. On, so it, there's no it, voice there exactly it's a tool it helps you yeah. um accelerate your processes so i create all my content with chat gpt but i don't just copy paste it i make sure to take the time to review it, change things that don't sound like me. It usually uses the same words for everyone that I hate, like unveiling and unlocking and all of these words. Uh, <laughs> I would never use these words in my content, right? Yeah. So I make sure to change these type of words. Uh, but yeah, that's Smart. exactly what I meant. Smart. Yeah. I want to talk to you about, for our listeners, 
that or in watching creative solopreneurs you know they're they're wanting to build an instagram to monetize and i think you've done a great job of leveraging an audience building a brand uh, attracting an audience on ig and then figuring out having offers on the back end to sell as a consultant can you talk to us a little bit more about like some of the things that you do as far as streams of revenue uh, i know we have the igcreatoracademy.com check it out and also your coaching can what what's kind of the makeup of how you're generating income today sure so i'm actually not doing coaching anymore okay. i start i have decided to focus solely on digital products real quick Juan, before you dig into that wh why did you decide to pivot from coaching to what you're currently doing now curious because coaching is not scalable and uh it's fulfilling when you have a connection with someone uh but it's also draining <laughs> it's <laughs> it's draining and i'm nodding my head i'm smiling because yes yes I, I, <laughs> I got you man i got you <laughs> and I feel like you can prov you can create way much more impact through digital products that solve the same problems and can help achieve people the same transformation for a third of the price rather than one-on-one -on -one coaching, which is also harder to sell, not impossible, but it's harder to sell. Whereas if you have like uh, an offer suite with like low ticket digital products, like mid ticket digital products and high ticket digital products. It's much easier and it's much easier for people to get your, your low ticket digital product and then move on to the next year and then to the next year. So it's, yeah. you, you keep the customer for, uh, for longer within mm -hmm. your world. So you made the pivot and, and I agree by the way, uh, <laughs> everything you just said. Um, and now you're, you, you run a membership, correct? So is the full, is the business the IG Creator Academy membership? So it's courses? so IG Creator Academy is really like the the, the brand name that within okay. IG Creator Academy I have different products, and I've actually been thinking about changing the name because I feel like I'm not only serving Instagram people anymore, but that's another story, and I still I'm still debating that. But expansion, <laughs> you're expanding now. You're, you're I'm kind expanding. Of All right, I okay. actually I've been thinking about just changing it to my my name, and you know I'm an entrepreneur and I'm a business owner. I'm not just the IG IG guy anymore. Uh, this okay. is something that I might do this year. So I okay. have uh, AI guides. So this is just like an ebook, uh, digital downloadable, which it's really easy to sell and it's what uh, gives you like consistent income. Like you can sell these every single day uh, through your content. Then I've got a uh, AI membership. Actually, I haven't launched this membership. It was an Instagram content membership, but since I'm pivoting a little bit to, mm -hmm. towards uh, AI, I've changed this to uh, an AI membership, which I'm launching in uh, at the end of February. And I also have an AI course that's called the AI Powered Creatorpreneur, where I teach people how to scale their brands beyond Instagram and grow their businesses with different AI strategies and AI tools. So just like I did last year, I'm helping people to just get I mean, not get off Instagram because Instagram is still, still going to be maybe it's going to be the main income generator for many people, but expand beyond Instagram to be seen as an authority, as a leader, as mm -hmm. a thought leader, not just as someone who's on Instagram. So I have these three products and I also get um, a lot of my income from brand partnerships and affiliates. Okay. I got it right here, Juan. It's from, from IG Creator Academy to AI Creator Academy. I've been Damn. thinking about that. Yeah. <laughs> That's it, bro. That's it. That's it. I'll send you the invoice over after the <laughs> kidding. Um, listen, so I, I, I love that. I, I love that you have uh, are evolving and embracing it. And of course, this is all to help and serve creators on Instagram and on different social media platforms. So I think what you're doing is is great work. You know, a lot of our listeners are creative solopreneurs and Correct me if I'm wrong. I, I I will label you as a lifestyle creator. Correct. Um, I'm not sure if lifestyle would be the right thing because I'm an online educator and I'm a business owner, and I do share my lifestyle and the lifestyle that I'm living. I have achieved through my online uh business, my online education business. So well, that's where I'm going, Juan. That's where I'm going. So I feel like you. And again, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like we're, we're on the same page. You value lifestyle 
Yes. You love to travel. So yes. you put lifestyle and then you created a business to support the lifestyle. Exactly. Perfect. 100%. Got it. So that's where that's where I was going to go with that. So yeah. for creators that are, and I feel like a lot of creators, solopreneurs, uh, we're not here to build massive agencies or big businesses. Our, our businesses is lean, maybe one to two to three person company. Um, but you are the personal brand, you are the business and you have help. And for that creator that is looking to educate, build a brand off education or building community, you know, how talk to us a little bit about you went from coaching and now building this academy. You know, what were some of the hardships, you know, challenges being a business person? Like, I feel like being a creator was something you had a marketing background that makes total sense. You learned IG, you crushed it, you learned, but you, you kind of navigated through the creative part, but from a business perspective, man, talk to us a little bit about some of the hardships being a business owner and how you evolved as an entrepreneur in a creator business. I love this question. And this is something I think my 2023 was uh, marked by this exact thing. And is the fact that um, I am a content creator and yes, I have a lot of back, a lot of experience and a background in marketing but not in business. And uh, of course, yes, you need to create content to market your business. But if you just stay on the content creation aspect, you're never going to grow a business. And there are so many other things that go behind the scenes that you don't see online. And even just learning how to sell your products. So yes, brand partnerships can be a great source of income. And that's how I started really monetizing when I started IG Creator Academy. Uh, but when it came to selling my own stuff, I struggled even with a big audience. And this is something that I want people to know. Having a big audience, having 100,000 followers doesn't mean you're going to sell at all. And I've struggled with that. I've struggled with selling my products, my offers. I've had to change them, change messaging. Uh, I've actually just started with a uh, business coach because uh, I want to keep scaling my business. I feel like, again, I hit a plateau. So there are a lot of challenges and setbacks and roadblocks as a business owner and entrepreneur that people don't see. It's not easy. And that's why at the beginning I was telling you I'm so focused on personal growth and development, working on my mind mindset. I'm a very spiritual person. I meditate. I journal. I do all the things that I have in my power in order to be able to... Um, go through all of these phases of entrepreneurship because i've had great months i've had great launches when i launch a product and i sell thousands of them i've had really bad ones and it's just how do you navigate all of those things without burning out without quitting because that's the thing like you, you might you could have some like a really successful launch or, or month or whatever and the next month you're like you hit rock bottom most people would quit so you need to find tools and systems that will allow you to uh, go through this. I do therapy. I, I, I do everything that I, I have in my power in order to, to survive as an entrepreneur because it's not easy. To land the plane here, Juan, and I appreciate you sharing that because I think a lot of solopreneurs out there, they uh, they navigate through all the, the emotions and uh, the mental roller coaster ride yeah. of being a, a creative entrepreneur because I mean, you're, you're preaching, man. I mean, I was having a conversation not too long ago with a friend. I'm like, man, I, I'm definitely a bona fide creative, but the entrepreneurship is taking me a minute. Like it's taking me a long time for me to learn how to run a business around yes. something I'm passionate about. And I know I have the vocation and the expertise and the speaking skills and everything that I do to be able to share this. But for whatever reason, this business thing is kind of tough. Like it's, it's, <laughs> it's kind of hard to kind of grow this thing. So I'm glad that you're sharing that because I feel like we need more creators to kind of lean into the the hardships and the challenges we all go through as creative entrepreneurs yeah. and talk about, because I think a lot of people can resonate. They see, as you said, the followers, and they think that translates into sales, or they yes. see the followers and think, oh, they must be crushing it. They have this amazing <laughs> lifestyle. And that's not always quite the case. It's a lot of hard work to kind of get to that point. So I'm glad you share that, man. I always tell people, the easy part is growing a following. The easy part is getting engagement, likes, comments, share. That's the easy part. The hard part is growing a business around that. Yeah. Yeah. As we land the plane here, what if there's one creator factor, like one thing that every creator should learn, at least have a deeper understanding or, or master, what would that be? 
Um, it's a great question. Let me think. Commitment. Commitment, uh, because as I said, you're going to have great months or you're going to have, and uh, let's talk about both the content creation part and the business part, like content creation, you're going to have times when you are reaching millions of people and you are like feeling on cloud nine, your accounts, your audience is growing. Same with business. You're going to have times when your, your sales are off the roof and you, or you're feeling really creative, you're launching things, but there are times when you're not. And it's, that's when you have to be committed to keep going, uh, to be disciplined, um, uh, and just having that clear vision that you have in your mind and sticking to that vision, having a vision is really important of where you want to go and tapping into those feelings and emotions of, uh, what does your vision feel like once it, once it's accomplished is a great way of, of going through the hardships. So commitment igcreatoracademy.com. We're going to make sure that we link it up on the show notes. He has a YouTube channel. He's on TikTok. There's a great blog as well for you to check out. And we're going to convince Juan to maybe possibly start a podcast. We can... It's happening. It's <laughs> happening. <laughs> Exclusive right here. Uh, Juan, uh, it's been a pleasure, you know, just to be able to, to connect with you. I want to give a big shout out to Rob Alasabas who made this connection. Rob has been the ultimate connector uh, so he's a great friend. I'm able when he reached out, said, hey, these are some creators that you should connect with. And I saw your content and I was like, that guy, I definitely want to make sure that I get Juan on the show. So, brother, it's been great connecting with you. And I think this is the power of podcasting and what we do as creators is collaborating, connecting yes. with each other, learning from each other, knowing that we're not alone on this path. Yes. You know, even if you're in Peru, I'm here in Houston, we can still connect and have an amazing conversation and have the opportunity to inspire others. So I want to thank you for for uh, being my dancing partner today. Thank you, Seal. Thank you for having me. It was a yeah. pleasure to share my journey and I hope that it inspires people. And uh, really my goal is that anyone who has this dream of becoming a content creator can achieve it because it's changed my life completely. Uh, and it, I just want people to experience the same. We'll leave it at that. Thank you.